tonight we are reading more of Frankie Fish and the <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Suitcase. Up to chapter two, wherever it is. Where's chapter two? Here we go. Chapter two, Old People Jail. I'm sorry, okay, said Frankie from the back seat as the fish pest control minivan pulled away from the school. I said I was sorry. Well, you'll go on being sorry, roared Ron Fish from the front, because you are grounded for life. Life, said Frankie. What does that mean? No TV, no iPad and no computer either, his dad continued bellowing. And if you... And if you can turn the page, and if you think you're going to the beach with the birds tomorrow, forget it. In fact, you're never going to see that bird boy ever again. Never, Frankie bellowed back. Never, never, never. Ron Fish bellowed ever louder, as if he were the world champion bellower reclaiming his championship. I've already spoken with uh, Gary Bird, and he agrees your friendship is done. In an instant, Frankie's daydreams shattered. His first ever holiday with a friend, trying out his brand new boogie board, riding the dolphins, kaput, kaput, kaput. He hadn't even had a chance to talk to Drew about what happened. Even when they'd been side by side in Mr. Dawson's office, Drew had only been able to mutter a faint sorry, Frankie, before everyone started yelling at them. That's not fair, he cried. Ron Fish pulled the car over to the side of the road, slammed on the brakes and turned around. Is it fair that your mother and I were dragged away from work because our son reduced a teacher to tears? Is it fair that Miss Merriweather was humiliated in front of the entire school? Is that fair, Francis? Is it? Frankie crossed his arms and slumped down in his seat. OK, fine. It wasn't fair. He's learning a hard lesson. <clears throat> Francis, you're only making it worse for yourself, said a calm voice from the seat next to him. That voice belonged to St. Lou. She was two years older than Frankie and super smart, super popular and super well behaved. This made Frankie resent her a little, and by a little, I mean a lot, especially right now. Don't you have anything to say in your defence, demanded his mum, Tina, also known as Tuna. Yes, thought Frankie, sulkily. It wasn't my idea to write that message. But he couldn't say that. He and Drew had a prankster's code. They didn't rat each other out. Not ever. When Drew was blamed for the itching powder Frankie had sprinkled through every open car window in the staff car park, he said nothing, even when he was put on yard duty for two works. And now Frankie was on a bound to do the same, no matter what the consequences. At that moment, Frankie wished harder than he'd ever wished for anything that his entire family would disappear so he could move in with the birds and be happy forever. Well, Francis, his dad thundered again. He's probably in a state of shock after today, Lou said. Maybe he's got PTSD or something. You know, like when soldiers come home from war. If anyone has PS3, it's you, Lou, Frankie snapped, not realising his sister was trying to help. Yeah, well, he better get out of that state, shouted their dad as he pulled back onto the road before he gets to Grandad and Nana's house. What? yelled Frankie. You can't send me there. Francis, your father and I are very busy with the pest control business, said his mum. We just haven't got the time to worry about your misbehaving. No way, said Frankie, shaking his head vigorously. I'm not going. That place is like old people jail. Oh, no. Well, I guess that'll make you its youngest prisoner, said Ron Fish, glaring into the rearview mirror at Frankie, who looked like he'd just swallowed a fart. Because you'll be spending the whole school holidays there, starting tomorrow. The following day, the Fish pest control minivan was as silent as a church service for mice. Frankie glared out the window as they drove. He hated visiting his grandparents. It wasn't just that it was boring, although it definitely was. Nana and Grandad were also known as Mavis and Alfie Fish, were basically living in the dark ages with only one TV and no computers. The only vaguely modern thing in their whole house was Nana's electric can opener, which she thought was all a bit whiz-bang. 
Frankie thought it might have been because they'd lived in Scotland before they came to Australia. Maybe people in Scotland didn't have the internet and computers and stuff like that. The real problem, in any case, was Grandad Alfie Fish, the grumpiest, sourest, meanest old man in the history of mean old men. He made old man Harris look like the Easter Bunny. Grandad barely spoke to anyone besides Nana, preferring to spend almost all his time in the shed at the bottom of the garden, where no one else was allowed to go. It didn't help that Grandad had a hook instead of a right hand, which Frankie secretly thought was a bit creepy. Okay. He knew he shouldn't, but he did. Annoyingly, nobody would tell him how Grandad had lost his hand in the first place. It was just never spoken about, like Miss Davis's moustache or Principal Dawson's 90s cover band, The Matchbox Blossoms. So Frankie Fish was left to draw his own conclusions. A. Grandad's hand was bitten off by a shark. B. Grandad was actually Luke Skywalker in disguise. In disguise. C. Grandad had high-fived Edward Scissorhands and come off second best. Frankie had once prayed that it was B. Frankie liked Nana Fish okay because she loved kids, had sparkly blue eyes and made good pancakes, but visiting Frankie's grandparents was like sitting down to a bowl of ice cream when there's a plate of rotten meat beside you. Sure, ice cream is nice, but it's hard to enjoy when there's a stench of putrid flesh in your nostrils. Frankie's mum turned around from the front seat of the car. You know your granddad lost his driver's license recently, she said. You can help your grandparents uh, out by running errands. They could really use an extra hand around the place. At any other time, Frankie might have laughed at the accidental joke, but today he couldn't even muster a smirk. His not a smirk soon drooped even lower as the Fish family's minivan pulled into the long driveway. They'd arrived at Old People Jail. Dad, I'm sorry, okay, Frankie said desperately, trying to sound extra sorry. You've made your point, now let's go home. But Ron Fish just gave Frankie a look and then honked twice. Be good, Francis, said his mum, giving him a squeeze. St. Lou gave her brother a sympathetic look, which Frankie misinterpreted to mean suck eggs, loser. Aren't you coming in, he said to his family, trying to keep a wobble, keep the wobble out of his voice. Maybe if they were reminded how boring it was at Nana and Grandad's, they'd realise this was a ridiculously big punishment. Maybe he'd even be allowed to go away with Drew after all, or at least be able to call him. But Tina and Ron weren't falling for that. Help Nana around the house, his mum said, and stay out of Grandad's way. And remember, do not go near his shed. Moments later, Frankie was left standing. He was left standing in the driveway as his family's minivan screeched off like they just robbed a bank, taking his dreams with them. Chapter 3. A moment of madness in a mad, mad place. Five minutes later, Frankie sat down on Nana's couch with his boogie board, which he'd brought just in case. His jail sentence felt super harsh, especially when he thought of all the fun he should have been having at the beach. He tried very hard not to cry and bravely succeeded. Frankie could hear Nana humming in the kitchen as she prepared morning tea. Grandad was sitting in his armchair with a newspaper open in front of him. He turned a page, ignoring Frankie completely. Frankie stared at Grandad for a moment and then at the painting above his head. It was of dogs playing poker, and had hung on that wall for as long as Frankie could remember. He didn't find it particularly funny, but perhaps Grandad did. Dogs playing poker, he said meekly. Classic. Grandad didn't even move his head to acknowledge the comment. After another long silence, Frankie decided to start again. Um, hi, Grandad, he tried. What's in the news today? Anything good? Silence. Grandad turned another page.
Did you know you can read a newspaper on a computer these days? That might be easier on your hook because um, you don't have to turn the pages on your computer, Frankie went on politely. Yeah, we all use computers now. Do you even know what a computer is? More silence. A frown deepened across Grandad's forehead. Frankie cleared his throat. It occurred to him that it had been a while since he'd seen his Grandad and it was possible that he'd gone deaf since then. Frankie increased the volume. Grandad, I said! Suddenly, Grandad stood up and glared at Frankie. Then he scrunched up his newspaper and slammed it on the table, which would have been very dramatic and scary, except that several of the pages got stuck in Grandad's hook, and he had to wave the hook around wildly to get them off, while the, while the sports section flapped around like a pelican in a bathtub. Frankie froze, not even daring to snicker. Grandad finally freed the crumpled newspaper from his hook, banged it on the table and stomped out of the room. A moment later, Frankie heard the back door slam. Without even noticing, he let go of the, his boogie board, which was fast becoming the saddest boogie board in the world. So began Frankie's school holidays. The one good thing about his grandparents' house was that it was clean and smelt nice, no thanks to Grandad's fish guts. The floors were regularly mopped, the polka dot curtains framed spotless windows and the aroma of blueberry pancakes wafted through the air. Another plus was that Grandad, Captain Hook, spent most of his time in his shed, but it was frustrating that no one else was ever allowed to take so much as a peek inside. What if you were being attacked by zombies? No, stay out of Grandad's shed. Mm. What if you were being attacked by zombies with axes and guns and girl germs? No, stay out of Grandad's shed. What if you desperately needed to do a poo and the last roll of toilet paper in the whole world was in Grandad's shed? No, find a newspaper and stay out of Grandad's shed. Of course, being forbidden just made Frankie more curious than ever. What does Grandad do all day in that shed? He asked Nana as she brought over a bag of marbles. I'm not really sure, dear, admitted Nana. He tinkers mostly, I think. Whatever it is, it keeps him busy and out of my hair. She winked as Frankie's eyes darted up to her purple hairdo. Nana didn't seem to mind keeping Frankie in her hair, though, which was lucky because it wasn't like there was anywhere else he could go. There was nothing for Frankie to do but play marbles, listen to talkback radio, and watch game shows on the little TV that Nana loved so much. Sometimes he laid his boogie board on the lounge carpet and tried to pretend he was riding a dolphin at the beach, which withdrew Bird. Nights overtook mornings and mornings overtook nights and Frankie's sentence ticked away and one thing remained the same. He was bored out of his brain. And then late one afternoon, just as Nana sat down with a cup of tea for another episode of Family Feud, Frankie decided enough was enough. He sneaked into the hallway and picked up the ancient landline. A chirpy Ron Fish answered the phone. Fish pest control, if there is a pest, we'll do the... Hi, Dad. It's me, Frankie. Frankie? Yeah, your son. Hey, Francis, Ron said, sounding more normal. How are you enjoying Nana's? Frankie took a deep breath. Look, I was just... I was just wondering if I could come home, he said politely. I've been here for a very, very long time now. His dad, his dad groaned loudly. So much for customer service, thought Frankie. Mate, it's been 48 hours, his dad said. Don't call us at work unless it's an emergency. OK, we need to keep the line up free. Your mother will come get you when we're ready. Click. The phone went dead. And so too did Frankie's hopes of an early release. Frankie dragged himself back into the lounge as the Murphy family on the TV tried to think of another thing you might do with a zucchini. Uh, uh, use it to clean your ear, suggested Mrs Murphy. Frankie slumped onto the coffee table, feeling the weight of his sentence on his shoulders. Near his head was a little vase of blue flowers. He stared at it glumly. Nana's bright eyes twinkled as she looked at him. Do you know what those flowers are called? She asked, turning down Family Feud for a moment. Frankie shrugged. Blue roses? Uh, what is it? My Myosotus sylvaticus, Nana Fish said. Oh yeah, that was my next guess, replied Frankie sheepishly. Nana plucked a single flower from the vase, otherwise known as forget-me-nots, she said, popping it into Frankie's shirt pocket. Um, 
Thanks, Frankie replied, not sure what it was going to, he was going to do with the flower. Then, just to make conversation, he even thought he knew the answer already, but he said, where's Grandad? Nana looked at Frankie, a smile tugging at her lips. In the shed, most likely. Then she sighed. He's been spending a lot more time in there lately. He's been a little grumpy too. Have you noticed that? Ah, uh, said Frankie. He wanted to say that Grandad was never not grumpy, but he didn't want to hurt Nana's feelings. Not really, he said carefully. He seems the same as always. Nana closed her eyes for a moment. Losing his driver's license was a big deal for your granddad, she said quietly. He's loved driving his whole life, even after the terrible accident that cost him his hand. Frankie held his breath. Could this be the moment when he finally found out what happened to granddad's hand? Not even St. Lou knew that. Frankie would have bragging rights forever. What accident, Frankie asked, not wanting to sound too keen. Has he crashed into other bakeries before, or was it a butcher's? Nana shook her head. You will never guess, she said, not in a million years. Was Grandad a pirate, Frankie guessed enthusiastically. Was he made to walk the plank and had his hand eaten by a crocodile? Best theory ever. But then Nana looked at the clock on the wall and said exactly what Frankie was hoping she wouldn't say. Oops, it's late. I've got to serve up dinner. She gave Frankie another bright smile, though her, he thought her eyes looked a little moist. You go tell Grandad that he's, that to his face that if he isn't sitting at the table in 30 seconds, he's not having any dinner at all. But he's in his shed, protested Frankie. I'm not allowed in there. Just knock and call out his name. Then that should do it. Okay, Frankie said, unconvinced. He headed outside, past the roses and daffodils, through Nana's beautiful garden. Which truly was like Disneyland for bees. He walked past the sunflowers and the forget-me-nots down the brick path to the shed. He felt like a golden retriever, but instead of retrieving a tennis ball, he had to bring back a cantankerous, crusty old man. A tennis ball would have been way more fun and much less angry. The back of the garden seemed dark and ominous, though that was maybe just the shade of the leafy maple tree hanging overhead. With every step, Frankie's feet grew heavier. He arrived at the shed door with his palms sweaty and his heart beating. Frankie had never been within two metres of the shed before, so it felt like a historic moment. If he'd had his dad's iPhone with him, he would have taken a quick selfie to mark the occasion. Knock, knock. Grandad, Nana says, said if you don't come now, you won't get any dinner. He said it quickly, ready to run if the old man yelled at him. No response. Frankie repeated himself, this time louder and slower. Still nothing. Frankie felt himself get a little bolder. He banged on the door a few times. Grandad, Nana says if you don't come now, she'll let the neighbour's cat wee in your cornflakes. Nothing. He thumped the shed door. Hard. Grandad, Nana said if you don't come now, she'll wash all your clothes in gravy and then roll them in seeds so you get attacked by pigeons on your morning walk. Frankie yelled at a volume that could be heard four blocks away. Nothing again. Frankie was really annoyed now. He hated being ignored by the kids at school, and he hated being ignored at home even more. But at this moment, there was nothing worse than being completely ignored by Grandad. <coughs> Grandad! Frankie yelled, and then in a moment of utter madness, going against everything he knew to be good and wise and holy, he pushed open the door and stomped inside the forbidden shed. Oh my God!